some people say that the languages die and, and I believe you know they just go to sleep because we can revive them, we can breathe them back into life. Tamenwa na sapsequata, nami mianashma, kupa shukwata, nami tananawe. It means it's important to carry on and teach our children the Indian ways. Hot Slachel, Shnoa Landry, Seed Stats, Bialop Bubs Ched. Good day, my name is Shanoa and I'm Pialop. We live off of our reservation, away from our own tribal community, and so it's always been important to me to keep my older son involved with our community through the urban native community. Sometimes in the school system, they don't see us. And it's not just the curriculum, it's like there's these weird stereotypes and then they think because we don't fit into that stereotype that we don't exist. So many of our kids can feel invisible. The lessons that have been taught to me, like in school about Native culture and like history, most of it was actually in my elementary school in PPS. Like in middle school, we didn't talk about Indigenous history really at all. And even in high school, I haven't really talked about it as much. So I think just in like English, like maybe some books by like Indigenous writers would be cool. You know, for a lot of folks, this may be your first coastal jam that you're coming to. So these are modeled after our traditional potlatches that we had since time immemorial. We are here to both honor our culture in this way and also really to uplift the native students here in Clackamas County. I think Portland is like the ninth largest native population in the country. The traditional caregivers of the land are people who are members of the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ronde. And I know that canoe culture is also very alive for them. And I was like, instead of having two days of a powwow, let's mix it up and bring the coastal jam here. And so that was kind of why we chose that, to really honor the people of these lands. The song that I sang last night at the coastal jam was a song that my grandmothers used to sing during the time of social dance, and it was a song that was sung when they carried the paddles. I felt that it was just that we still offer our songs from where we come from because that's what the Coastal Jam's about is potlatch and being able to come together as one and share our songs and share our protocols. Traditionally, all up and down the coast, we had a gifting economy. We think about you and have you in mind always. And so these gifts come from our hearts. Through that system, we would have these huge gatherings called potlatches. People would travel by canoe in the ocean, and you would bring in your own songs and dances and languages, etc., etc. With colonization, the potlatches were actually outlawed. It was illegal to gather in that way. And so a lot of our canoe culture went to sleep for a while, and a lot of our languages went to sleep as a mode of survival. Probably starting in the late 80s is really when canoe journeys started coming back. The first year, there were maybe like 20 canoe families. Every year, it just kept growing and growing and growing to where now there's like hundreds of canoe families. And so the gatherings are like thousands of people now. I think the Coastal Gym does have an impact only because like there were so many people outside, like the students that we had coming up to us asking about it. And I think that was really cool. So they were like, oh my gosh, what is this? And we like could tell them about it. And so just it being like in the school, I think was a big part. The idea behind having the powwow at one of the schools was powwows are social gatherings. And as far as I know, there had never been a powwow at Happy Valley Middle School. I 
like to pow, I like to dance, and I like to sing. So I was like, of course, any opportunity I can to get the kids out there singing and dancing is like something that is fun for us. How are you all? My name is Malia McNeil. Please come dance with me today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Some things that stands out to me when attending powwows is all the welcoming presence, especially at the grand entry, where everyone's just celebrating their freedom. They're happy to have gathered for the weekend to dance and smile. Being here at the powwow and at you know a lot of community events, I think very simply, I feel full. Being in community, like it's like being at home without being home. Well, my first birthday was at a powwow. <laughs> So I don't remember it too well, but I was pretty much born and raised going to powwows, going to coastal jams. We're doing like canoe protocol that we do here like in the Pacific Northwest. Since I was an infant, I was uh, introduced to the powwow circle. And so I've been dancing for as long as I can remember. Um, and I love it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I've been singing and drumming, and I was brought up dancing ever since I was a little guy. <laughs> My son is nine, but I was about seven when I started to be a part of it. It's like a celebration we do, and it's just to feel good with other people and uh, sing prayers and have a good time. It kind of feels like you're flying for some reason. I don't know why. What really made me feel happy was like seeing the looks on students' face, native students, of like, how cool is that? We're having a power at my school. They were just like, oh my God, like this is so cool. Well, I hope that it will really not just increase our visibility and presence, but also support our students in feeling like they matter, that they are important, that they don't have to hide who they are, and that they can really be proud of themselves and be proud to be a part of a community that has such amazing gifts. <clears throat> Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Slush dum dum, which means happy heart. Ginehayan, thank you. Hoi, until I see you again.